my goodness, what a perfect time for gambitchery. The shady ladies have come back. It's been so long, it feels like it's been a lifetime. Hi! Hi! I'm Samir Roy, co-creator of Gambitchery at Gambit Magazine, and occasional writer. We'll be doing some more of that this season. As always, I will be doing all these things with my fabulous shady lady cohort, Miss Margot Papard. Hi, you guys. Oh I'm my so gosh. happy to be back. Oh, my God. You know what's so funny is it feels like it's been two years, and I was like, no, there was a season last year. Sort of. Yeah, and plus it was, if they do it so early in the year that by the time the December rolls around, it does feel like ages ago, but it really wasn't. It was only, you know, nine months before that. Yeah. But, I'm but so it always glad that feels we're back. like so long. I know. Well, there's so few shows that like have... wait this long now. It feels like everything else just comes back in like three months. There's another one. I'm like, we didn't even get a chance to ignore the album that was made by the winner <laughs> of the last season of The Voice, and now there's another one. <laughs> I guess that's true. With reality shows, they do have a faster turnaround. But RuPaul is like a fantastic HBO drama. You got to wait a whole year for that shit to this come back. This is like Mad Day. Men level. Mm -hmm. Yes, she is serving Game of Thrones realness. You must wait for this i, was I like, will drop the trailer when i feel like it exactly it's like oh i'm in control here don't even try <laughs> that's Bitch okay me on twitter all you want i, I will surrender just you. to rupaul she can do whatever she wants i trust her and boy were we not let down it was our hundredth episode i know everybody break out the champagne and the party Keep poppers 100 <laughs> it was so i thought it was actually really good it, it felt like right away it felt a little less productive I mean, obviously, it's always very highly produced. Right. I'm like, you know, there's a huge level of planning and, like, you know, A lot of money goes into creating, the show. And you know. It's, it's up on the screen. But, like, it felt less um, planned already, in a way, than last season. Oh, you mean that as soon as each queen walked in the door, there wasn't one in particular. You're like, all right, well... It was fun, guys. It was well, great it, seeing you. I don't know. It just felt like, you know, last season it felt like they were trying, like they were, I don't know, they were a little above it in a way. You like, mean all the queens that were on it? No, I meant like the way the show was, the whole show was, was produced, pretty, like the whole tenor mm -hmm. of that season was very like, it's a little too aware of itself almost. And they're kind of like pulled back a little from that, I felt, in this first episode. It was like a more genuinely genuine documentary feel as opposed to like just trying to create it because i remember last season i felt like untucked was the more interesting yeah show that was very interesting that we two. were we were more excited to watch untucked every week last season than we were the actual episode even when even john though, waters was on it and they had some really amazing challenges like some of the, the hello best kitty challenge is probably my favorite like the death becomes her challenge that was also or whatever great. they called it they had they had a lot of really memorable challenges but there weren't Let's just say they didn't start off with a sewing challenge last season, did they? Because that... no, they always start off with a photo challenge. The first episode's right. always. Photos. I'm talking about the maxi challenge. I'm just jumping right in. Oh, the like, well, because they had a, a lot of them had to sew their outfits together. That was new, I think. Well, they always had to sew something, right? But not in the very but first they had episode, to do, which like, I felt. Three... Well, they had to come. Well, they had to come prepared with those outfits, anyways. Right. Then they had to still make one, but right. they had to like do the drag for each outfit that they busted out. It was like. It was a like, spring and fall fashion show. Kind oh, of thing. right. That's what it was. That was actually really great. You know, so that's what But that it, was but, also, was, like, by the end of it, when Violet walked her runway, you're like, all right, okay. Like, there's already something. I yet. want that jumpsuit. Also, I know who won. <laughs> like, it was kind of apparent. Like, you could just, you could sort of tell everything from there, even though you kind of didn't want to believe that you did see it all. But I don't know. I felt like it. they kind of went back from that really odd tone that they struck last season and it instantly felt a little more fresh like the drag race I loved before so I'm hoping that it kind of sticks with that it's a very diverse bunch and that's saying something since I feel like the show is very diverse in general and it's hard to but I meant like ages levels of experience types of drag it's kind of like all over the place and it's really interesting yeah like it's almost like last season was like the social the social like the ultimate like explosion of like the social media version of anything like everyone knows it's going to be written about on twitter and everyone is doing something deliberate like they're, they're being even more over the top about trying to get the attention so like this is how i do it in this day and age is kind of how that season felt like everyone was like it felt like the technology issue of, like, a Vogue magazine. It was really weird. Like, you know, like, Ginger Minge was, like, you know, a little too plotted. 
In her approach, that is, you know. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like maybe not every season, but once every couple of seasons, you do find or you get the queen that has seen every episode of every season seven, eight, nine times, and they feel like they've they they feel like Alan Turing. They feel like they cracked the code on how to win, and they it's always interesting to see their various approaches to that, and it never works out because it, no. the one thing I will say is that true talent does usually win out on the show. Even the top three usually go on to do doing a lot more, well, and you keep seeing them constantly. Apparently, Pearl is now signed by Wilhelmina Models. Not surprised. And just had her first, her first uh, photo shoot. Did he sign as a male model as, or as uh, just as a model? Just I just saw it on Instagram oh. today, and it was a shot. It looked it was an amazing shot, actually. So I'm like, well, there is something there, you know. Like RuPaul wasn't wrong, but it still felt wrong in the moment because you're like. Wait a minute, how many... Wait. Something there, but maybe not quite, just not drag queen there. It felt so... That's why I think a lot of it felt so pre-planned. It was also, there was that feeling. So we don't know Pearl how this is going to work out. I thought she was low-key hysterical. Just, you know, a lot of times, but then when she's like, I, when she didn't know what Macbeth was, I'm like, please let that just be like a horrible joke and you're just playing a part right now. You because, know it's not. You know like, it's, it's not. It's so disturbing. It's just so disturbing that that... It's Mac awesome. bitch. Mac, I love that title. <laughs> but uh, I loved a lot of. I loved all the ideas in this episode. It's almost like last season they were trying to like change, and it was like they were tr like, you know it felt too unsure of itself. Mm -hmm. And it's like okay, they kind of figured it out from that experiment how best to merge what they want from the new age with like the, what makes Drag Race really good. And why everybody, almost everybody, who writes about it. It's like their favorite reality show of all time. For good reason. They have to do so much shit. It's the most fun. It's the most entertaining. It feels not as cloying as other reality shows. And it also celebrates people instead of puts them down constantly. Like, The Bachelor really bums me out. Like, I can only watch it every once in a while. But then when everybody starts to get really serious about what they're saying because the Stockholm Syndrome is set in, you get very sad for everyone yeah. involved. Um, but Drag Race, there's always a really fun maxi challenge that kind of pulls it together. And it's, it's yes. the theme of the episode. And, it, and their sleep deprivation never fails to amaze me in terms of the humor and levity that they always bring to the table. And oh, I, yeah. The guest judges are always really great. You can tell that they're huge fans of the show, too. And I loved Nicole Richie was the judge. Oh, my gosh. I was <laughs> like... But it seemed like... A, a, I guess sometimes in the first episode, it can always be like a random celebrity choice. I'm like, what does this person have to do with whatever this challenge is? It's like, oh, it's like a nice high-profile person that you could get for the show. Let's just go with it. Yeah. They kind of do it in the first episode. Because last season, who was it last season? Was it Kathy Griffin? Such oh, I don't remember. Wasn't it? Oh, I thought was Andre that two Le seasons ago? I thought it was Andre Leon Talley. I thought they had like a real fashion person there. I don't think so. Uh, I'm getting all of my, my reality shows confused. But I mean, the guest host or guest judge excuse me is not really what's yeah. important here at what all what's important was the celebration of the 100th episode and to do so they brought back all but one right. of the drag race winners but the way they even did that was hysterical too because it was it was nice it was almost like a best of rupaul's drag race and a legitimate competitive like purpose to all of it happening like, it all made sense together. It all added up together. It wasn't just like, okay, they they want to do something big, and it doesn't actually make sense with what they're doing, but they're going to do it anyways, because you just have to. Like, no, it all tied together really well. So we could see all the winners, except for Bianca Del Rio, who they replaced with a circus clown, which is feels like a little bit of a read on her being, like, just too busy to be part of this episode. And it's like, that is kind of shitty. But... Who knows when it was actually being produced. Right. And before I jump to conclusions, but, you know, I too asked myself, she probably has a lot going on. I'm sure she wanted to be there. I miss her jokes, but what can you do? But it was also like a situation where like some of those people actually, like obviously we know Tyra Sanchez has time. I, when I saw Tyra, I was like, oh, she came back? Well, they needed enough. They needed to have as many. I guess she won. She was a winner. I know so she won, but if like. If the theme is to have all the winners there for this photo shoot. I always feel like she's the biggest mystery of past winners versus everybody else. Like, nobody ever really knows what Tyra's up to. She's well, the least visible, maybe. She's occasionally very bitchy on Twitter. 
says shit like doesn't have any sympathy for like gay kids who commit suicide because they gave up on life kind of shit. And so everybody that basically made everybody really hate her and uh, apparently occasionally is arrested for um, getting in fights or something at bars. Oh, she still performs, <laughs> still makes amazing fashion. But I don't know that she's ever, she's hardly ever in the news except for something like that. It's usually something negative. Because the last thing I read was about her documentary, <clears throat> excuse me, that had a, either a Kickstarter or GoFundMe page um, called Drag Dad. It was supposed to be a documentary about her raising her son and then a bunch of family stuff happened. And even though they made the money and started to film it, they never finished it because she moved and like kind of ghosted the director and then uh, they had sort of already spent the money so no one could get a refund and no one would see a final product so it sounded really not great but it also sounded like Tyra was going through some shit so I was personally very surprised to see her there but then again I guess just collecting a check perhaps who knows that probably also, has contraction, to do with it. contracts might have to state that she has to come back a certain amount of time. I, I don't really know. Who Behind knows? the scenes dealings. All the other, I mean, like, I don't know what, <clears throat> I don't keep up a great deal with Bibi Zahara Benet, but Same. she still looks am amazing. amazing. Like, I was just like, oh, you were, you still got it. You still got it, Cameroon. <laughs> I just, I still love her. Um, and we saw Raja doing sort of like a Lady Gaga look. Yeah. I think. Um, it looked hard to talk in. Jinx, because she barely yeah. talked. And Jinx is hysterical. I was I very love, happy to see Jinx. Because she's busy, too. I mean, she's actually got a show. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just the the the, the second Vaudevillian show. Because you have that musical review, like, comedy show called The Vaudevillians, and there's, like, a second one um, that's touring now. Oh. Like, so she toured with the first one, she toured with this one, um, you know, and then every now and then they're going to be it the Castro Theater doing some show. Right. You know, every one of them who's been on this show and one is like done a show at the Castro Theater. I mean, we saw... Was, Jinx was in The Craft, wasn't she? Or not no. Jinx. Um, oh. Needles. Share Needles. I'm trying to remember. I'm, I'm also thinking of the um, Drop Dead Gorgeous where we saw Jinx and Pandora Box. No, I thought... Maybe Sharon wasn't. I thought she was in the craft. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not yeah. really sure. But uh, yes, they tour here a lot. We see. We've seen them obviously often because we cannot keep shit straight. Yeah. So they can have ten minutes of us being like, "Was it this?" Or we can just move on. <laughs> Why not? Let's go through the whole list of shows there. No. But um, all the. So who else is there? Um, well, Raven did show up, which I was very excited about because I love Raven. I mean, this was later on. Yeah. They brought back some past queens, and it was very organic. But we should just talk about all of the queens that came through the door because that's how we're usually introduced to them and first through the door was naomi smalls who i thought was doing a mixture of naomi campbell and joan smalls no was, biggie smalls but but when she said biggie smalls i was like oh that too but it was like the whole i'm a model and i'm super tall and leggy which i got or whatever but joan smalls is also i mean that one tall. line was kind of odd she's like i've got legs up to my asshole i was like, like that's not a hot... everybody have Legs. But that's also not a hot analogy. That don't say that. <laughs> like you know, I get you didn't want to. You want to say something more original than legs for days. But nonetheless, I don't know. Like I liked the look, even though she does have very simple looks. I will say. Yes. I wouldn't say that her final look wowed me at all. Really, you know, it was. I'd say underwhelmed and was barring Michelle Michelle Visage's wig, which I yeah. did not appreciate. <laughs> that's true, and she had that. She had to make the boat, but nonetheless. So she's the first one who comes in, and usually the first person who comes in doesn't win. How long does the, I mean, I feel like, like the last first season one... it was Miss Fame. Oh. I mean, Miss Fame's still doing well for herself. I know, but then I just think about but, her chicken impression, and it makes me want to laugh. Oh my gosh. But yeah, he still does, like, makeup videos and stuff for, like, major magazines. Like I wouldn't doubt it. You know, he's got a career. For real. Um, but yeah, didn't win. Came in first last season. Like, it came, was the first into the workroom last right, season. Yeah. Didn't come in first in the competition, unfortunately. No, we all know how that ended. Yes. Uh, just couldn't get out of the thinker. <laughs> How's your head? What? Well, you know, it's, um, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Every time. No, she got it one time. She finally did. It took her a second, but she got it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh. Um, but yeah, so this, it was Naomi Smalls, um, who is tall, leggy, and I like that, she, that they let her out, you know, she actually expressed, like, an actual opinion about something. It wasn't just her just being bitchy, but when she was talking about one of the other people in the show, it was not, like, it wasn't really shady, it was so more like, when she was talking about Derek Barry. Oh, at the very end? Um, when they're working on their costumes. Oh, oh, I see. Or oh, their outfits, sorry, not costumes, outfits, outfits. They're working on their outfits. Because, God, they just, like, they really reuse, like, all the seasons of Drag Race really well for this episode. It started with the photo shoot of after each one comes in. Um, did they do the same order in the photo shoot, too, as the order that the people, as yeah, they came oh, in? No, because, um... Because who was next in? Who came in? I think it was Ni- Nisha Lopez. Oh, yeah, and that, like, white, that, that... Uh, white skirt and black top with the. Is the window closed? Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Um, well, she came in with that weird. I don't know. It was a cute outfit, but it wasn't like spectacular in any way. You know, like like so like the the not quite knee length white like shimmery skirt with the, like same fabric and black for the top, and then like long. Like the Nicki long Minaj black cut, hair, but it was long black. Yeah, hair that with the blended bangs. in with exactly it blended the shirt, in with the shirt, which I and made her look shorter. Mm-hmm. All of those things. I'm also not surprised that she's a pageant girl because that feels very. I'm being pageant casual. Yeah, it was it was an odd entrance look, you know, like everyone else sort of tries to come in with like something that shows off like what they're really good at, and it felt like there wasn't much personality in that look. Right, and I agree, and I think that that, you know, that comes into play later. Um, yes, it does. She she does prove to be very much a pageant girl in every sense of the word. Uh, I didn't like her outfit, but she seemed nice enough, and she looked like J Lo. So what can I say? Yeah, <laughs> she looked like J Lo. She yeah, she looked. I mean, she was very pretty. I will give her that. You know, a lot of them actually, even like the one with the um, suddenly more avant garde looks, like. It's very fishy season. It has been. I feel like the last couple of seasons. I feel like we've made that comment. They've made here. that shift towards like it's like that's almost like a standard. Is that like there has to be some basic level of fishiness mm-hmm. for you to really like be considered um, to oh, be on the show? Oh, you know the second person that walked in. It was actually it was Cynthia Lee Fontaine. Yes. Oh my Who god. Who being friends with Nisha? They know each other. Yeah, because well, they're the Puerto Rican girls, right? But the the let's the, 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 the De Las RuPaul's Drag Race. I feel like they should have their own union. Well, like, they, I love that, like, every season there's all, like, he always remembers that Puerto Rico is part of the United States, everybody. Um, despite somebody making a joke at one point, like, you know, about, like, immigration or something, I'm like, yeah, but you're talking to someone from Puerto Rico, so that, that they're from the U.S., darling. Okay, but nonetheless, I really liked Cynthia Lee Fontaine. She's kind of like uh, Tammy Brown from like season one, the first, the lost season, the weird filter season, um, the one that BB won. Mm -hmm. Um, But like, I like her, I don't know, I think she's less crazy, but still like, I mean, that doesn't mean she's not crazy. Okay. Just well, less in crazy on that. than Tammy right. Brown. No, she is definitely crazy. In a very charming way, I think. Right. I like, think super sweet, and I don't know. It's not like... <laughs> I feel like she's not over the top with her crazy. She's, like, the perfect amount of crazy. But she's she's glad when she's supposed to be. She doesn't talk over people. She doesn't seem, at least for right now, overly shady unnecessarily. So we'll see. But she is... She's kooky. She's kooky. She seems like a handful. And I like... She seems like the Chiquita Bonita lady. She's just a little... Chiquita Banana? Yeah, there we go. Yes. Originally Carmen Miranda, but then, you know, that's a sad story, so we'll just... We're just gonna skip right over that. Just so you know, it was a sad story. Go look it up. Bananas is my business. It was the name of the documentary. (laughs) Being being Bananas is Cynthia Lee Fontaine's business. And it was... I, I, she get, brought a smile the whole episode. Every time she was on screen, I smiled. So I'm like, that has to count for something. So I hope we see more of her. And um, we'll, when we get to the outfit challenge later, which was also amazing. <laughs> um, it we'll was talk about that. something. It was 
I mean, I liked the challenge. Yes. The products, some of them were just disastrous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you throw, you tell a bunch of queens, some of them with disparate levels of sewing to make something the very first day they're there, you're going to get some fun looks. Some mixed results, if you will. Right. Which, all things considered, I do feel like, it's, again, another very talented group of queens. And I think but there's that, always a bunch who just don't see the iceberg ahead of the Titanic. Right. And, you know, you can only be lucky for so long and all that other stuff. But so far, it seems like all of them really are pretty talented. And it was kind of, it could have gone one way or another. I think that sh maybe you should have, ex like, maybe should have, two queens should have gone home, maybe. But maybe not. But, like, that's just kind of my opinion. I thought the person who won the lip sync deserved to stay. I definitely think that, but I think, you think that there was somebody else that like, could have gone home. Yes. Oh, look at you playing Alyssa Edwards over here. The person that I would send home is not in this lineup. <laughs> I can't do the mouth thing, unfortunately. Not loud enough. But well, I like Shashi is so the, good at it. You need the, like, visual to that, like... Yeah, the whole face. <laughs> I, I can't. I'm not... <laughs> I'm not funny Sorry, I'm in trying. That, way. that was a good one. That was I just did a good one. But nonetheless, that is a very Alyssa Edwards way of who would you have put uh, put down instead of Layla? Um I mean, we can get to that. We'll get to we that. It. Okay, so we get to Cynthia Lee. And then next is someone else who didn't really like send me. Uh Dax exclamation point. But I loved the aesthetic and yes. the whole idea that there's that. Dax is like a cosplay nerd. I wanted to say, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't, I wanted to like Dax more than what I saw, but I'm excited to see what let's, else let's she hope. can do. Let's hope, because I was, I hope she's doing some Ripley cosplay at some point in the future. Let's hope she really brought what she said she brought. I and don't then, know, she came in a storm, that's respectable. I mean, that was cool, but then I wasn't so thrilled with some of the later work. Right, and she also kind of got lost in the shuffle, I feel like. Yeah, and when she did the photo shoot, it was just like, eh? Right. They were like, like oh, give me the exclamation point. And she's like... Yay! She yeah. threw her arms up in the air. Yeah, she threw her arms up in the air like a really bad cheerleader. They're like, oh, okay. That's interesting. I was expecting And then I, didn't she jump, different. and then when the camera flashed, she wasn't, if she was in an awkward position, so it would have looked terrible. <laughs> oh, no, that was... Um, well, maybe that. Well, that probably was true of her, anyways. But that was also um, <laughs> um, that was a true of Chi Chi Devane. Oh, because Chi Chi Devane, she's the one who came in a the, the trash, trash, bag. Dra trash bag dress, and I love that Sharon Needles. I was like, you have no idea how many of those dresses Alaska left in my house. Because <laughs> you know that was like the first like two things that Alaska wore when she was on the show were, were trash bag dresses. Like one was a trash bag, one. Was the trash bag dress was her entrance dress. And then when she had to make her dress, she made it out of saran wrap. There you go. But uh, yes, Chi Chi Devane was like posed so low, like in, in that dress that looked with her, just her feet showing that like Matthew it, Anderson was well, like, as soon as he pointed that out, I was like, I was like, like so you saw right. the shot, you, got, you saw the test shot of it. And we're like, oh, oh, okay. Then just two little pointy, sparkly feet. But you, you got something there. So yep. good thing. I liked Chi Chi Devane, like, but I, it sounded kind of mean when people were like, oh my gosh, Chi Chi is like country. And then you kind of saw what they meant. I, I was going to say, I was like, I can't fault them because I agree. Like, I felt like there was something a tiny bit condescending about the way Bob the Drag Queen um, talked about Chi Chi. When it was just like, oh, like, no, yeah, she's country. Like eating catfish sandwiches. And I'm like... Is there something wrong with a catfish sandwich? If I was going to say, I'm like, um, a catfish po' boy is quite delicious. Uh, but I don't know what the problem with that is. I bet you probably paid like $75 for one. But I think that also catfi catfish now. has a undertone Connotation, yeah, yes. of being for poor people because it's the cheapest. Poor people of the South. And it's like swamp it's, people. Pull yeah, it's that, swamp know. cheap fish. You know, it's like tilapia of... It's the tilapia. But you know, itself. if you cook it just right and deep fry it, I don't think that there's anything wrong with catfish. I think that the negative connotation that catfish is for poor people is kind of silly because it's not like you were saying. I'm sure a lot of upscale restaurants sell it. Also, it can be delicious if cooked properly, like most things. Like most things, yes. So yeah, I I took Except Dorothy Umbridge spouse. with uh, Bob. Dorothy Umbridge <laughs> with with Bob the drag queen's comments, but. 
About the catfish. Not about the country thing, because that's accurate. Because that actually was kind of accurate. But it was also, like, she's less country than you kind of, like, imagine her to be, I think. Yeah, I mean, she's not, like, country Mary or cousin country. But, like, um, I still, like, kind of liked her photo. Let's see. Who else? Some of the other, like, oh, oh yeah, after Jax in- was Nasha Lopez. Right. And that's, we already talked about the outfit, which I didn't really, wasn't digging. And then in the photo, she was just really boring and totally blended in, like, she was not, and like not even like I'm one of the winners. Like blended in, just like, oh, I'll be back with more soda for all of you. <laughs> like the craft service person, like dressed up for the day and got caught on camera. Mm-hmm. It was like there, there was no personality, like none. No, I really, I'm, tr- I'm searching desperately to find something nice to say, but I don't really know anything. It just that's how it felt. Yeah. And well, she didn't, the, we didn't get a really overwhelming sense of character. Everybody came in, you could kind of see what their shtick was. It didn't help that after her was Acid Betty. Right. Who, yes. as somebody says at the end of the episode, like, she gets away with being a bitch because she's, like, artistic. Like, which is weird, like, that's I part of the I don't think so, artist- because I think that she is just a bitch, and that's fine. That's just who she is. Like, I and think I'm gonna get tired it, of that hair pretty quickly, though. It's not great. It's not great. She looks like a, she looks like one of the Rugrats all grown up. It's a little much. Right? Like, I don't know. It feels like she's not speaking the right voice. Come on, Diggy. <laughs> but uh, I. But ask the buddies okay, I, I guess. I liked the aesthetic, too. I just like the, the inventiveness of it. And like, you could tell that she actually does kind of I like the think, spirit of it, but I don't quite think that it I comes like together. Her right. But I don't think. As it, much. I don't think it comes off as polished as she thinks that she is, personally. No, the first outfit looked a little sloppy, I thought. But then, I don't know, I kind of looked over it again. It's like, you can kind of go either way with it. Okay. Like, it's part of the look, and I get it. And it, for what it was supposed to be, I think it works. Um, I don't think it was supposed to be, like, perfectly tailored. I think it was supposed to be a little loose. Um, but, I don't know, I feel like, I don't know, maybe she could either go really far, or she could do you think she's out gonna, really quickly. Do you think she's the villain? I think she's trying to play the villain. Kind of like, I was just like rewatching season five and Serena Cha-Cha was like the ingenue queen and she was like basically way playing up like being like the like sassy bitch. She was trying to be like like rude and insulting every single person. And I'm like, what, did the producers like talk to you, pull you aside and talk to you before <laughs> filming started and tell you to play this role? Because you're like, literally, it's just so irrational at this point that I can't imagine that any human being really thinks this way. Right. I don't think we actually had And I don't think people. you're a good enough actress to pull this off, so. Right? There's also that. <laughs> Even if that's, you did go to like That's art the school. biggest sticking point, is if you could pull this off convincingly, then you would be the world's greatest actress. But And why aren't you, you winning this show if you were, you know? Exactly. But you couldn't do it. But, well, she probably didn't have also the talent. She had horrible outfits. But, you know, <laughs> there was that problem as well. Um, and she couldn't really sew. She could only do soft sculpture. What does that even mean? Just say you can't sew. Yeah, right? It's like... Does that mean like paper mache? Like you're gluing things together? It's you're just clipping together? pieces of fabric onto something okay. instead of sewing well, it. Well, any nine-year-old could do that. But everyone seemed capable of at least putting something together except for Nasha. Um, this season, look, everybody found a way to put yeah, something and, together. And everybody was like, oh, well, Derek Barry, she's just... A Britney in person, she's not going to be able to sew anything. And right? Bitches. She did. She did. But we, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge soon. Um, who came in after Nisha? It was Robbie Turner. The, uh, who I love. I liked Robbie, and then I was so disappointed in the end result at the very end. But the photo was like... Oh, it was great. It was a great moment. And, and I'm also so glad like a, that they she's friends with Jinx, because that actually makes a ton of sense. But she stole well. Jinx. Bitch stole her look. Yeah. Like, for real, stole her look. Like, almost exactly. I was like, did she actually see what Jinx was wearing and then go find something for the... Huh? Like, because that was... Was that what she came in wearing? Yeah, that is what she came in wearing. Like, at some point, she saw what Jinx was wearing. Even before she walked in and did her initial strut? Like, how were they even wearing the exact same wig? It had to have been planned. That was so funny. Yeah. In wonder, some way, somebody Maybe they're trying it. to subtly promote or plant the bug in our ear that they're going to have some, like, twinning show that they're going to take on the road <laughs> and that everybody stay tuned. Because if you like this, just you wait till the two-woman act play. <laughs> I love, but I liked a lot of his, his, a lot of what Robbie did in the well, interviews where he's like, let me tell you a story about flats. No. 
<laughs> no, my favorite was he's talking about that dress that was horrible. Was like this dog's looking at me like I just want to get out of here, and I'm, I'm looking, looking at, at the dog, dog like I want to get the fuck out of here. here. <laughs> it's all going very poorly. I was like, I love you. Well, and I then even oh, but like, I love it when he was on the runway and he's like, they're like, do you think you should be in the bottom? And he's like, no, because I think I have a winning personality. And they're like. <laughs> Oh, like, like now that had to be a joke, no, and it I was a like, good one. I know, I thought it was the perfect answer because it doesn't throw anyone under the bus, and you just get to make a joke and be charming. But it, it was so convincing that they like they like as if like he's so <laughs> lacking in self awareness. Well, yeah, he completely he forgets could... to pick something for himself. Oh my god! And he actually gives people things that match their personality. I'm like, you're so kind. I feel like he was having fun, like being creative. Like, yeah. oh my god, and this like, would be perfect oh. for you. This would be perfect for you. And this would be perfect for you. And then there's only one. Oh, oh this is not perfect for I, me. Exactly. Oh, I screwed myself. Yeah, completely. Well, Robbie comes in in like that flowy robe kind of. What did you say? Lana Turner and he like, <laughs> forgot who he was trying to be. But I definitely saw Carol Burnett. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And I love that was when he, when he and Acid Betty have a little moment. Because, I mean, Acid Betty showed up spraying like the entire room with like hairspray just to be like basically a bitch. And then she meets Robbie Turner and it's like, oh, you don't look old. And then Robbie's like, I know. That's fucked up because Acid Betty is older. Older and looks older. Check. Acid Betty actually looks a little bit older than her actual that age. That lip ring does you no favors. Oh my god. A lot of people had pier- a lot of septum piercings this I don't season. Mind. No, it was just I just noticed that there was a lot I of totally them. And agree. I'm like, oh, because we're, you know, it's like new kids. <laughs> new kids. <laughs> new kids on the block. I'm bad. I have a septum Pass piercing. Streets back. Oh, no. <laughs> don't. <laughs> no, but it was just like it, it was like. But I just think that yeah, that was an unnecessarily shady comment. Like you don't look old. Oh like oh you now now the producers pulled you aside, Acid Betty. Oh my God, you're Ask like Betty really pretty. pretty. <laughs> what a fucking. Well, bitch. no one's ever gonna accuse Acid Betty of looking pretty. Oi. I mean, yeah, no, know. I meant that she she was reenacting Regina George from Mean Girls. Like, oh, oh my yeah, God, yeah. you're really pretty. Oh, yeah. Thanks. So you agree. You think you're really pretty. Like, that was the attack that was launched on Robbie Turner, who was not prepared for any of that, which was hysterical. Uh, but then, kimchi. Little Miss Kimchi. I loved kimchi. And actually thought kimchi was kind of adorable, like, almost, like, very dateable. Oh. It was very cute. Oh. I was like, oh, my God, look at you. And, like, I just loved the aesthetic, too, like. And I liked the it all. silliness. It was like he was silly without being like super pretentious about being funny. Like and he really the is like a giant gag. nerd. And I loved like this is my ode to come to was it, I am here was to destroy Givenchy? everyone. Was it Givenchy or is it Gucci that he was doing an ode to with his runway look? Was it Givenchy? I can't remember, but it was either Givenchy or Gucci. It was one that started with a G. I can't remember which though. But either way, <laughs> Kimchi seems like a ton of fun. I can't I, wait to see what else she has in her bag of tricks. I am a little bit disappointed that she didn't get the Hello Kitty I feel like that was like a, Maybe that was Robbie trying not to be obvious. Right. But but they cut away to Kim Chi in that moment. We'll get to that in a moment because we got to go through the rest of the queens. Because I, I just had to... We had to pause just for Kim Chi. Because we've been looking forward to Kim Chi since we saw the announcements. We're like, oh shit. I want to see Kim Chi. I want to see. And all I can think about is you being like... Real missed opportunity that you didn't stick a little before any of that. Right? I mean, but RuPaul did already say it, like, about Jujubee once. What? When, like, uh, she came out, like, I forgot what she came out looking like a, it was too early to be Nicki Minaj inspired, but there was some look that Jujubee came out on the runway with or something, and then RuPaul called, I was like, oh, Lil' Kim Chi. And I was like, damn it, now no one can use that name. <laughs> but Kim Chi is as close as you can get without being right, because it really works. Yeah. Perfect. I think it all really works so far. Um, and seems to have, like, a decent, like, sense of, like, creativity and taste level. Like, mm-hmm. realizing when he gets to the challenge, like, what he has to work with and how awful it would be to work with all those materials. But still made something amazing. Floris Henderson Brown. I loved, like, the... the. It's almost... I think Kim Chi is also friends with... Um, uh, who was it last season that we were, like, just Trixie. Oh. There's a little bit of Trixie in the way she does her makeup. Okay, I see that. Um, I, I see that. You know, I and see you. I loved the the sort of like uh, lime acid green. What what color was that? 
What well, would you just, which, out, which outfit? When she comes in her for her initial outfit with oh. the little like headpiece on, mm-hmm. and it was what color was that outfit? It was such a bizarre like soft like pastel almost. It was like a so, it was like a lighter or grayer periwinkle. It was it very it was a kind of skirted between green and blue in a way around. I don't know maybe it was just the bad you know um re- not reception but the bad definition <laughs> in the broadcast that's still not in HD. But um. <laughs> Nice I love the like. Was that a read? Just a little bit, but <laughs> even the nails, like the 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 nails that were color coordinated, the long things. I, I s- didn't have a problem in the world with either outfit. I thought she totally nailed it, and I thought the and photo, her photo was, really was cool. amazing. Like she totally did. Like I am queen of all of this. I also think that some people try and do the cartooniness, and it doesn't quite have the sophistication and polish that Kim Chi already has. Like it's replacing something else. That's not there. You know what I mean? Like, it's covering for something. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I agree. You're like, I don't have something beneath this that's grounding this, so I have to go over the top with mm-hmm. it and sort of reject any moment where I have to be, like, a real, like, have some real humanity peek through, which is, like, they always talk about That's what they want. They want to see the heart. They want to see your heart. <laughs> but um, I feel like Kim Chi's kind of already got it because she's another one of those. My mom doesn't know I do drag. <sighs> Queens. So heartbreaking. I was just like, oh my gosh, no. Because you're so amazing. I feel like if your mom was cool with you, you guys would have like such a great relationship. I feel like you could totally... I think the saddest thing was like, yeah, I've shown her pictures of me in drag, but she doesn't know it's me. She just thinks I'm working on something else for as a makeup artist. I was like, ay. Uh, that is well, very sad. she's going to find out now. I was going to say. At some point, she's going to find out because somebody who watches is going to be like, wait a minute. <laughs> I recognize you. I know Kim Chi. But yes, kimchi is one I think we are going to be keeping our eyes one on. One to watch. Definitely. And the next up was Thorgy Thor. The name is terrible, but I actually kind of like Thorgy. But I love Thorgy's personality. Thorgy is so fun. Like weird And I never hippie. I never like people with dreadlocks. I'm always very weary of them, but he seems like so much fun. I something about him is very cute. And also I loved his out, like her outfits when she first walked in. I thought that was great. And then I also really liked her cake. Oh, it yeah. Was super cute. Watching her make, like, the little choker collar was really oh, fascinating. Yeah. It was so well done. Anyway. Girl. I like Thor Jane. I don't know. I just really like Thor Jane. I just think he's out of drag, super cute dude. And then yeah. also in drag, very adorable. I really like the whole persona. And also, yeah. another nice queen. Nice, yes. <laughs> Even so though Thor Jane and Robbie can be friends. super bitchy about her. Oh, my God. Like, the whole time, I'm like, at some point, this is going to come back to bite you. Acid? It's really? going to. The acid is going to bite you. It's going to burn. It's going to burn you as well as someone else, but it probably already burns her inside. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> this escalated quickly. <laughs> well, how else do you spew it if it's not inside you? I guess that's true. I'm only saying that. But nonetheless, after that, who was it? Uh, Bob the Drag Queen. I like Bob. I liked Bob, too. I actually like the look. I think looks, again, Super fishy, like, looks equally good as man and in drag as woman. Nose piercing. Another septum Check. piercing. Um, but I loved the, um, I loved what everything he did in the episode, though. I thought, but I just don't like the name. It's like, it's a memorable name, I guess, but it's also not a name I would have chosen for myself. I did like his explanation to Rune. He's like, my father's last name was the drag queen and Bob. That was for, a good joke. Yeah. Who was he was throwing shade at comedians, telling a thousand jokes and maybe only four being funny? Ask Betty. Which is funny because she's supposedly, that's, she's like, oh, the New York Queens are here together. Because it's Bob, Thorgy, and uh, Ask Betty. Betty. And they're like the most obnoxious ones. Like, all oh, the best drag queens are all in New York. And I'm like, um, Well, that's what Bob said. He's like, all oh, the best drag queens are in New York. Like, maybe there's and then, a lot there. And then Acid Betty there. threw a shady comment about, like, well, I don't do drag in Brooklyn. I do it in Manhattan. And I was like, oh, goodness. Do Bur- you really? Oh, Burroughs a snob. Got it. <laughs> I'm like, I've been to Manhattan. I've been to drag shows in Manhattan. I never saw you there, Acid Betty. In your 37 years. You look good for 37. <laughs> you don't look old at all. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't think you're 40 at all. Almost 40. Oh, you're not 40? Oh. Oh. Shade. Well, you look good. You look really you good. You look rested. Oh, <laughs> uh, and then oh, then after that, after Bob, um, we're gonna go over. I think Bob's uh, like outfits Bob later him. because I liked the outfits actually. His Beyonce jumpsuit. 
I mean, that looked a little too much just like a swimsuit to me. It looked Maybe too... Maybe more than less... It was less of an heard... outfit. It was the outfit that Bob made. Oh, I thought it was... That I thought was really good. Me too. Especially um, all things considered, very good. And then I loved how he's like, I'm just here with my ugly purse. He just couldn't stop talking about that purse. It wasn't that ugly. I didn't think so either. But, yeah. Then Layla came in after, and... Like I said, they, they, all made the, they all made the Beetlejuice joke because it's clearly the look that Layla was going for. Right. But Or slutty ref on Halloween. Yeah, it was like really odd because she was not um, very outgoing or charismatic in these moments. She was very withdrawn. For some reason... Her photo was reflective of that. Wow, I could not believe that she was... Please. Why would you have? Why would you have even ever gotten in that position? It just makes no sense. It looks like you're pooping out like the platform heel of your shoe. <laughs> Let me tell you a story about flats. No. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. was bad. It, it was a weird, weird. I did thing. not. She was so uncomfortable, and it really just showed. Mm-hmm. I think it was just nerves because. I have to agree. I do, but I we, will say... We're going to get to her later. A quick read, because when she walked in, she had purple eyes to match her purple hair. And I don't like the matchy hair to... Her like, eyes were too DTM. What? Dye to match. Oh, <laughs> I was like, what's DTM mean? No, it's nothing dirty. Goodness, <laughs> honey, no. No, I meant like, I thought like DMs. I thought it was like another thing that I was just not hip to. It was like... Another acronym of the gay community that you didn't know. (laughs) Exactly. Like, people still tell me now that, like, I've never heard DILF before. That's so funny. I'm like, honey, honey. Oh, okay. No, I know DILF. Come on Oh, I know you know. (laughs) I know you know. We've walked through parks together, which sounds bad, (laughs) but it's not in the way that you think. But Layla came (laughs) in and didn't make the splash that you would expect, I guess, considering what we saw later on. Well, yeah. That's that was, true. You wouldn't have you connected were, like, those dots. Really I wouldn't have set up yeah. for that. Um, but well, after yeah. her, that was when we finally meet Chi Chi. That was officially when we meet Chi Chi Devane, who I all like I said, we love. Yeah. I want to, you know, I, I like her. I don't see her lasting very long. She's, she's like, feel, even though she's, apparently Chi has been doing drag for five years. Really? That's oh, what right, they yeah. said. But no, she, she has so the, like, the, the feeling of the ingenue queen of this season in a way. Like, it she's has that vibe, youngest, but she's though. not the youngest, and she's not, like, the one who's been in drag the least amount of time. Because I think, um... I think Naomi Smalls. Naomi She's was, definitely one of the younger ones. Yeah, so she's been in drag less. Um, there's somebody else who's only been doing it for, like, a year. I think Kim Chi's only not, hasn't been like doing it very years long. Or something. You know, there's other people who've been doing it less, and yet, um, Chi Chi is the one who feels like the Shangela, only... She does have a very Shangela vibe. You know, like of this season, and the fun. No, what was this is something we should have should have mentioned this earlier. What was really funny was one of the perks of this really great photo shoot opening. You know, to keep with the tradition of having all the winners, is that as each queen came in to take their picture, it was like you could see which ones were like mirror images of another. It was more than just Robbie Turner and Jinx Monsoon. Right. It was like when. Um, when Layla came in for the photo shoot and sat next, sat down next to Sharon Needles, it's like, oh, it's like you're seeing like another, oh my God. Mm-hmm. And another then, side. You know, and so it kept happening <laughs> when each one came in, like you could see like there was a parallel with one of the other queens that was there. And you're like, oh shit. You know, like Acid Betty also was kind of like a Sharon Needles. Yes, definitely. I mean, Sharon had better hairline. I think Sharon had overall better style. Still does. Yeah. Still does, um, but I got that feeling a lot from this photo shoot, which was uh, really, really interesting. Um, I don't know if there was anybody that was really a Bianca. I'm trying to think now. Um, Actually, what about uh, Cynthia? Because she's got kind of like, I mean, she doesn't have the same sense of humor as Bianca. Like, it's not as biting. And I don't know if she's going to make as many pop culture references, but I do feel like the kind of goofy clown. Yeah. Not, not to put Bianca down or even Cynthia or, and boil them down to just being a clown, but like the more like goofy Lucille Ball type, I, I give it to her. Okay. Um, but yes, I am still a fan of Chi Chi, who is. Was she the one who came in saying, Le Bon Top Roulet? And everyone's like, <laughs> what is that? And I'm like, I don't think good times are all, You've guys. never... 
okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna blow past that stupidity. <laughs> like, you ever heard of Mardi Gras, motherfucker? Come on. She from Louisiana? She's from like Shreveport. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm like, well, oh it's my god. Not like Mississippi South. And Louisiana has a really That's rich like drag Creole culture too, South. you That's know. Fine. But it's... like, so I'm like, I feel like we're gonna get some fun and good times with Chi Chi. Um, and then finally, Derek Barry. The Britney, Britney, Spears. Imp- Britney Spears impersonator, who is the hundredth queen. Bringing up the rear. Bringing up the rear. Really stunning likeness. I know. As an impersonator. I was like, but also reminds me a lot of... Um, Chad Michaels. No, I was thinking of uh, Courtney Act. Oh, you're... I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You didn't hit me that hard. Okay, darling. good. <laughs> I get so excited. I have soft skin, but I'm not that delicate. <laughs> <laughs> you're totally right, though. That's exactly who Derek Barry reminded me of. It's like, I want to say Chad Michaels, but I know it's probably somebody else. I can't quite put my finger on it. That was who it. I was reminded of. I love that Chad Michaels actually, what, during the photo shoot, was like, I really like kimchi. I loved the, I was like, you know, having seen Chad Michaels perform and do things that were way more out of the box than what you saw him do on Drag Race, actually, mm-hmm. um, I was like, I could understand why he would have appreciated Kim Chi's look hmm. and aesthetic because I've seen him do like more horror inspired things that are more avant garde and theme and look than you would expect. So there actually is like a sort of affinity in Chad's drag, even though Chad is like more traditional pretty drag. Because really, I feel like the Britney impersonator would be like the mirror of Chad, who was the right? Chad impersonator. You know, like the likeness was so stunning. Like that's where the the, the parallel came from with Derek Barry, but although Derek's photo was amazing, but another person who had a man name, their oh. drag name is just their name or whatever. Or some sort of Bob duty. the drag queen. Right. But, um, but I think it was, was it Sharon that said like that Michaels, Derek, Michaels, Derek Barry. I'm like, oh. but I think it was Sharon that was like, Derek worked that entire set. He like posed on everything, grabbed the chair, sat in front of them and made them all his backup dancers. Like he did. I mean, did it right. Yeah. There's no complaint there and looks so much like Britney. It's insane. Uh, it was at the moment when we get to the really good challenge, the Maxi challenge, I love because keep them with the like all the seasons, greatest RuPaul's greatest hits. It was like they're f- like the best design challenges from each season mm-hmm. um, were like everyone had to, each person, each queen had to recreate them. And for some reason, Morgan McMichaels is there to shoot a ping pong ball out of her ass. I didn't get that. Which, or, which obviously didn't really happen because you right. can tell from the angle that it was shot obviously. at. It was obviously no, that, fake. That was a bad angle. And to they me, actually by the way. had to have the queens like act like, oh, like it actually happened. Like we all know it didn't happen. But that's It was Robbie, a bad angle to begin with. You could may, tell so. It yeah. was very obvious. It wasn't shadowed well at all. But it didn't make sense to me also that it was like, why, I don't know why, random, it why randomly selected? Why doesn't why it have, it be like just who have did like the a, best of the photo gets to be the person Or to, just have a bag full of their names and just have someone pick one. Well, they had to do something raunchy. I, I, I appreciated the joke that they were going for, which is the execution was a tiny bit lacking for me. But letting a random person choose who gets what, obviously, I guess I, I, it's normally something you give away as part of like a prize for winning the challenge. That's true. It did feel like we got something cut out. Like, the winner of the mini challenge. Right. Like, oh, wait, who was that again? Robbie? It was kind of Robbie, because they seemed to love it. His, his love photo, Robbie's essentially. Another man name, although that could be, like, you know, a woman man. Maybe right. Too. But unless, uh, like, Robbie seemed to have, like, the best reaction to his, photo, to his photo, except for Naomi Smalls, which is really, like, supermodel photo of the day. Or- except for the, <laughs> when Violet Chachki's like, like, she was like, oh, she's really good, except for the cliffhangers. <laughs> And he was, like, he was like, you know, we're like the toes, like, you see how no, far over totally the shoes true, they extend, though. like, gripping around the edge, like, instant boner killer. It's also true. Totally true. Every, I'm like, oh. Violet, Violet just There's a common the truth. problem with Julianne Moore. She seemed to do that a lot, because she's, with anybody who has big feet. Oh. Uh, I remember there are, like, horrifying pictures of Paris Hilton for a while. Like, because... oh my god, it's horrible when you see a close-up. It's like, they're all smushed and, like, oh, jangly, oh, jutting stop it, around. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop <laughs> it. Oh my gosh, but yes, luckily the fo- most of the photos, Naomi clearly earned, the, like, she didn't pick the name Naomi for no reason. It suits <laughs> Naomi Smalls, because Naomi Smalls is an amazing model. Like, legitimately, like, I think 
Naomi's going to have a modeling contract as soon as this show's over kind of thing. Because she legitimately served. Twerk! It was just the the outfit and the challenge that she got. She ended up getting the um, the float, like the drag pride race. Float. Yeah, the pride float, like the boat. And it was, I guess they said it was beautifully decorated. It kind of just looked like a bunch of fabric hanging it off of it to me. Like a, and maybe again, it looked like a... Again, it looked like a small child made it. And maybe it looked a lot better in person than it photographed sure. on camera. I'll I'll just give her that. But um, that's the one that she was assigned. And the outfit was really just like a slip. It was really just a slip. Like a pretty slip, but just a slip. And that boat. And granted, she had to make the boat. So it's like, how much effort can you put into the outfit? But you brought outfits with you. And the outfit you came in with initially was also super tiny and skimpy. What did she come in wearing? It was something that showed off her legs. Right, obviously. Yeah, so it was like there's not very many, not very much fabric on her. Which is not a problem, but it's like, are those all the outfits you brought? Because it's the second one in one episode that you repeated. Yeah. So, but she was kind of right when she was talking about. But I also do about, feel like when you have a flo- like a fifty pound float strapped to, to you, and I do also understand Michelle's later critique about it. But it's kind of hard to pick something for that because, like, you don't want to be too hot, and like, it, it, you have to think about this giant thing around you, or also maybe not think about it, only think think about the float, and then last minute just throw on whatever. But. I also think that, I forget which queen, I think it was Nisha made a comment about how all of her clothes look really cheap and they're all very small pieces of fabric. So fashion-wise, maybe she's not a fashionista, but she is a model. A model, yes. So Good she just needs there, some help. Squirrel the, friend. Yeah, but that's what stylists are for. Or like maybe you have a queen help you that has better sense of style than you do. I'm not really sure how that works, but yeah. I think that it can be salvaged. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely um, think there's a good base there. And I think super, super, super cute out of drag too. Like Oh yeah. Stunning. And I love the ad- I just I love the attitude though. I do love the attitude. Like she's got the Doesn't like, seem shady, like it seems like she's just to learn. shady enough, yes. you know. But like she's got the like I'm all that attitude, but like when she expressed an opinion about Derek Barry, it wasn't like a just a bitchy attitude. It was like well, no, Derek, Derek's going to have a hard time because Derek's well, always impersonating someone. Also, on top of that, we find out that Derek became a drag queen on Halloween, and he's only ever done Britney. He's never done anything else. So it's like... So that's like a giant red flag. And it was perceptive. Perceptive there, Naomi Smalls. Mm-hmm. Because Derek got the... Um, it was the, the Christmas dress challenge. The one that where Shangela brought out the snowman and made the lampshade her skirt. It was like Queen's clean up Christmas. Oh yeah, the, yeah, the the I like the Queen who mopped Christmas. Queen, queen, queen who something mopped something like that. Christmas. I think you're totally right. Um and got like tons of like Christmas decorations. And I love that all of these It looked like the looks clearance aisle out. of Walgreens the day after Christmas. Right. He has so much stuff and I love that all of the stuff was brought out by one of the former winners. It was a bit ironic. I mean, I understood why Jinx Monsoon came out to an, like she was came out representing the Sugar Ball, mm-hmm. but that was where Jinx Monsoon was in the bottom two because she kind of tanked the Sugar Ball in her season, so she did not succeed at the ball. It was that's the only time we ever saw her really lip sync for her life, um, and killed it. And we're like, oh wow! She, for some reason, everyone expected her to not do well in the lip sync, and it's like, well, she's kind of a theatrical performer who sings and dances. So maybe she could do this thing that involves you to like look like do you're singing and dancing things. and yeah. act. She could probably do it. And she did. Um, but <laughs> Oh, and look, she won. But she came out with like the sugar ball. It's like, is that her just being like, yeah, that's right, I sucked at it and I'm going to present it. I don't know. Who knows how much decision making goes on behind the scenes and her, or how much of a say she gets. It might just be like, here, this was your season one. Because the sugar ball was uh, Cynthia Lee Fontaine who had that really super adorable dress it was not i wouldn't say low key because when you looked at it up close it was there was a lot of work in it and i was yeah. like okay it was just well, like did she hot glue it or did she sew it on that's my i question. would imagine she had to hot glue it but i mean it is candy so it's also hard to hot glue candy yeah. onto things because the heat tends to make it melt so it's like you kind of I, I just uh, i love the look well it i was, like the tear away factor i thought that she had a lot of smart design <laughs> elements yeah i thought it was cute and the, the, she and had I a thought good, her hair she had a good, good too yeah it was all adding up for me. Yes. Like the whole spirit, her whole spirit was really nice. And 
it was reflected in the cuteness of that dress. And it's a cute, sweet dress for a cute, sweet queen. And with a little sexy tearaway. Mm -hmm. Very Roxy Andrews. And some she doesn't make a habit of that because Roxy Andrews just always had a tearaway. I had a tearaway <laughs> underneath my tearaway. <laughs> Uh, but yes, um, <laughs> that was, so she the got sugar the sugar ball. ball. Um, and let's see, the Hello Kitty challenge went to Dax, exclamation point. Well, for a second I was like, okay, well that makes sense, because you're into cosplay. You could probably make something really cool. And then did not make something very, it was very pretty and were very well fitted. I think it was, it was well a constructed. Little, it was a little too literal. But it was just like, well, um, she did just... you see the challenge that they had, where they had to make like Hello Kitty's Because all Dax did friend. was just sort of dress up like Hello Kitty. And, and put on little kitties. And I was like, that was really disappointing. That would have been for me in like bottom. That would have been a competitor for the bottom. And then, of course, the drag on a dime challenge went to <gasps> Nasha Lopez, who announces that she's only ever bought her outfits and never made one ever. She also proclaimed that she, quote, spent a lot of money on this, end quote. I'm like... Um, then why didn't you bring something that suited this challenge? Well, I that you could have just added shit to, you know what I mean? Because I yeah. feel like they could have done that, but like bring something that you just have to do is glue fabric, do something. You could have been smart about this. If you have money to spend, you needed to spend it more wisely. Um, yeah, kind of have essentially a, a basic dress that you could build, have several basic dresses that you could build upon. Yeah, it was most unfortunate. It was very, very sad. Yeah, the giant slit all the way up the it side. It looked like she. It looked like <clears throat> she literally just grabbed fabric and wrapped it around her. And I mean, what was a that dress, like? Oh, that was so waist. Okay. It was a fence. Cinch. She put a fence around her waist. She couldn't make it look any better than that. And I that, feel like that I could have made it look exactly. better than that. And you I don't, don't know need to have sew. sewing skills to make that look better. You just have to know proportions. And, like, you know your body. You're trying it on. You should at least know that this proportion There's is There's a off. freaking dress form there with your measurements. Like, it didn't... <clears throat> I don't know. There's no real excuse for what came out. It was really bad. I think the hairpiece could have been cute if the rest of it had come together. But it was, like, that weird, like, what was the pattern on that fabric? It was, like, dice or something. It looked like an old man's shirt. Right, it like a or the kind <laughs> of it, shirt Tony that, like, shirt? like that your grandma buys for you because she's like somehow like thirty years behind in the times in terms of style. Sometimes I don't know. Some, that's very specific to experiences of people I know. Um, that shirt just looked like something out of a thrift shop and not in the good section. Definitely a thrift store, like the thrift store fabric. Or like you pile. bought a pound of clothes and this was one of the cast offs. Like I could go like on. that place in the mission. Mm -hmm. Where you buy clothes, like, but they have better clothes than that. I know. I just, I'm trying here. I'm trying. It looked, <laughs> I think, oh, what is it? Like in the 80s, they had those satin print scarves that were very popular by Long Vaughn, like a bunch of other high-end designers. Then inevitably, if you ever watched Double Wars Prada, you understand that high-level couture finally drizzle, drip, uh, dribbles down to like Forever 21, JC Penny, and so on and so forth. And it looked like the JC Penny version of like a silk fun print scarf. It just didn't even, oh my God, it was so clunky looking, you know, like. It was ugly. The whole thing, it was bad. It was all bad. The best thing about it was her leg because she's she got great like legs. She was less stiff than the robot in Metropolis. Like, oh my God, it was not great. Like, even she could move. Like, it was just so bad. And by comparison, so, you know, fat, like, Fashion on a dime, that, okay, fine, it's a little out of your comfort zone, but like you said, she could have been smart about it, whereas Bob got the curtain challenge, which I remember did not go well for oh, every the queen. Gone with the Window challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. Bob's dress turned out actually kind of cute. It was super cute, like the matching I headband. Loved, I loved the Stepford Wives vibe I got from the whole ensemble. I thought it was really well constructed, and he was kept talking about the ugliness of that purse, but I was like... I'm kind of like living a, for yeah, this. Yeah, it's kind of chic. I really liked this whole thing. I was like, I who can knock you? I don't think anybody can really knock you on this at all. I think you did a really good job. Um, and let's see who else got that. Of course, uh, Robbie Turner, a mistake by mistake, gave himself the hair ball. No, the the, the bitch ball. The, the dog themed one. And that was just a dreadful outfit. I don't know what Robbie was thinking with that at all like i don't know how you could have looked at that in the mirror and be like yep i'm going out in this like <laughs> i really don't i don't see how i they thought could have done everything it. from the neck up looked great yeah 
<laughs> and the, like we talked about like earlier like the attitude like where he was just like oh my god like the dog is looking at me like can we get the hell out of here and i'm looking at the dog like yeah let's get the hell out of here like it's all, i just loved his closing line of, it's just not going very well I'm like <laughs> oh my god first of all i love you second of all yeah no it's not it's it not really well. wasn't Really, really wasn't. And Robbie should be very, very thankful that his photo turned out as well as it did, or else he would have lip synced for his life. Right, and I don't know how that would have turned out, but also... I don't know either, former, but who knows? Got it. But no, the hairball, that went to Kimchi, who ended up winning... And made that either Givenchy or Gucci-inspired from last season. The Lion. Which, okay, so her walk was atrocious. I'm really glad that Michelle Visage said something. Because I was like, okay, it's probably part of the character. So when she said that, I was like, all right, nailed it. I know everything. But also... Let's hope that that's actually the case. I really hope so, because that was painful to watch. She just lumbered down there. I thought that the the sheer force of her moving forward was going to topple her over. Yeah. <laughs> she had all that hair on her, too. But it was the most wearable thing ever. I love Nicole Richie's lines. Like, I would wear this to school drop-off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, but yeah, I love that. I love that. that. There was that moment in the workroom where um, Bob is like, "Oh, this person's hideous, but I'm using it anyway." And Kim Chi was like, "I think it goes with the look, though." <laughs> it's like, no, no, I think it's really cute. I'm not saying it, it looks bad. And they're like, "You're shady, you shady bitch." I think oh, Kim Chi's goodness. too sweet. I really like Kim Chi because I loved that outfit. It was, it was so, so insane cool. and so cool and so perfectly her like. The sort of like the uh, the anime painting of the lion face, like was her makeup. Like I thought it really worked, and like the shading her with the black skills are hand. insane. There's she's so good. Like and that outfit. Like, I mean, you can watch Project Runway for a hundred seasons, and you won't find something as innovative and as well polished <laughs> as that. It was kind what of crazy. What if they judging Yeti that walk? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yes, Yeti that walk. Girl. That's totally true. Oh, Chi Chi got the. The um, glitter ball. Oh. Um, that I was trying to remember what Chi Chi got. It was the glitter ball, and they had because they made all that drama about her. Like she ripped her the dress the and everything. Seams. I don't know. She's like, there's no way she's gonna go out there. How is she gonna do that? And like then she came out and it was like perfectly fine. I was like, what was all that um, Sturm and Drang about? I'm trying to be Tim Gunn here. <laughs> he loves to say well, shit I think like it that. was. I think Thorgy was the one that was like, well, you have to sew it a certain way. And oh, yeah, he was like, oh, for some reason, it's not accepting like the bottom stitch. Like the fabric won't take the bottom stitch in, so you can't hold it together or whatever and i was like oh look at thorgy being sweet and actually knowing how to sew a lot of people knew how to sew i was, I was like it's like a new Except thing for now Nisha, like was not man and that that was a curse and uh, as betty i mean i didn't like her dress but it was well constructed and she I does know how to sew yeah i didn't so much like that weird cardboard backing that like was it covered with paper it was trying too hard to be avant-garde and i didn't like, like it. i feel like she had done something different with it maybe made like a fan Something. I didn't like the shape of the dress. I didn't think it did anything for her. I'm just like, oh god, just like the weird bald, what's up with the big poof? I don't thing. like it. Like, I, I don't it, like I it. Really, like, I, I love what he does with in terms of coloring <gasps> it and styling it for each oh, look. Now like, I know it reminds me of one of the pinheads from American Horror Story, uh, Freak Show. Or maybe the Wheelers from Return to Oz. You know. <laughs> I just don't I, like you. I'm I'm right there with you. I don't like the big poof of hair. It, it's get a wig, get a good wig. Something. Hopefully, that, hopefully she's got some wigs, or maybe it just comes down and goes over. I don't know because you know, all so we've looks, seen, yeah. we've seen Acid Betty with her top knot in the workroom. So I, that's I, true. I haven't seen it styled. I mean, unless top knot is styling. I thought it was interesting so. that like um, Chi Chi totally got the hots for Layla. I was like, look at that ass, and I'm like. That's not the one I would have picked yeah, instantly that people would think was hot. But I also Thorgy think it was and Chi Chi yeah, both surprised. thought Layla was really hot. But actually, I thought Layla was kind of cute too. I don't know, like it wasn't I like so the too. stud muffin of the show, but I was like, "Aren't you kind of cute? You're like short and stout, but not like too big." <laughs> Jesus. I also like that his underwear said Layla McQueen on it. That's yeah. Funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, nice it was instant crush. Apparently, who was it last season? Last season, I think it was Miss Fame. Was Miss Fame was pretty cute, and, and also Pearl. Pearl is very, very, Pearl very was really, attractive. really pretty out of drag. Um, but since who else, who else did we go over? Um, we went over Naomi's boat look. Yeah, I thought so. My pick for a third queen in the bottom would have been Naomi because that dress. I was it not, was not even a dress. It room. was nothing, and like the makeup was also kind of beat. So I was not a huge fan I of that like, look. You know, and I thought the boat sucked. 
I don't know what everybody else saw. I didn't saw, see. Did. I didn't see what they were seeing in right. On the stage. I didn't see it either. I thought that she just put on the same old boat. And I'm like, you seem awfully, um, just like Michelle seems awfully forgiving of this boat. She's like, oh, I think it's actually really nice. And I'm like, usually you're a lot more critical of like finer styling distinctions. It's just the first episode, so she's just trying to be. But nice. then Derek like had all that Christmas stuff, all that like holiday decoration stuff, and then just wore like a bikini and he glued a couple things to it. It was. I think it was the bush, the holiday bush trimming is what won everybody over. I guess so. But, but I, I thought it was really... very much a Britney look. It was, yeah. It's how Britney like, would cover the Rolling Stone like, issue for Christmas. But I feel like Britney would have like worn even more crazy shit. Maybe. Maybe. But I had to go along with RuPaul where they're like, like you know, because like, Michelle was like, we want to see other things too. And RuPaul kind of agreed. And she's like, I just need to see something else now. And he's like, but don't you want to see a little more Britney? Yeah, but in the back like, of my mind, I'm like, that's Snatch Games for. Oh my God. But, oh my God. It's going to be one of those disaster things. Like I have to change it up and be diverse. So I'm not going to do Britney for Snatch Game. I'm like, no, don't listen to anyone who tells you to do that. That is like I'm going to do Cindy Crawford. What does Cindy Crawford sound like? Do you even know? <laughs> do you even have a reference point for anyone else? Because, like, just seriously, just like try to do the diversity thing elsewhere, Derek. And Please then save just Brittany deliver on for, Britney for Snatch for Game. For Snatch Game. I mean, granted, um, Tatiana did Britney for Snatch and Game. And that was brilliant. She won the first Snatch Game with Britney. Oh, right. The first Snatch Game was one with Britney impersonation. It was, it was also an iconic Snatch Game, though. I thought she did really great. I mean, I thought it was really tough to have her, ha for her to have beaten Pandora Box as. Um, Carol Channing. There we go. Like, uh, scurvy. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I loved that. But I was just like, okay, but that was the first dra uh, drag, race, drag Race Snatch Game winner was Britney. So, will it happen again? Will the fact that all that Derek does is Britney gonna count against him when they do Snatch Game? Or maybe, does he actually, can he actually do the personality? That's gonna be a test too. We'll see. Uh, if Derek lasts that long, because I saw that Derek is already on the list of people to perform at the cafe and at staff for Drag Race Mondays coming up in a few weeks. So I'm like, I'm thinking not lasting that long. Ugh, that's not great news. Because I was actually really looking forward to his Britney and Snatch Game. But we don't know anything yet. But so Snatch let's Game just... came really early last season. That's also though, true. So it's possible that he'll last just long enough for them to get him into Snatch Game. Um but yeah, I thought it was Britney d does a sexy Christmas album. <laughs> Pretty much. So, oh, you were right, by the way. Kim Chi's look was Givenchy inspired. There we go. I couldn't remember if it was Givenchy or Gucci, but I knew it was... Some... Even though she... <laughs> I was, was Oh, on EW, they said even though she walked like a drunk linebacker. That wasn't my favorite little line. Oh, uh, of... that's completely true, though. That was the perfect... That was the best description I read online of the walk, because it was like... But it was also kind of like... She looked like Grand Concierge at a club or something. Just there was like something about it that there. seemed very, like, her, though. So I'm like, I'm thinking that's actually Kim Chi's walk. Oh, I'm hoping please. not. Maybe, she'll, maybe there'll be, like, a Tyra-style, like, runway somewhere for them to practice on. I, I, one can only hope. Because at least, at least this show doesn't put them in the same house. Oh. They, get to, they get, like, their own, like, hotel rooms or something. Oh, that is so true. We never live... see them at a house. You know what? I never realized. They that. only ever show them, like, at, like, their hotels, like, getting ready in the morning to come into the workroom. It's, like, a, a way to show more skin. Like, oh, here's the hot wine getting out of the shower. I guess in this season it would be Layla getting out I of the I guess. Shower. Well, you want to talk about Layla's look? Um. Because it was Rupocalypse now, and it was kind of basic. It, I, but I loved the jacket. I loved the jacket. I thought it was really great, but that was, like, the only thing she really did. Other than the, the, the makeup. Right. Um, Which had fucking wig matching contacts. It drives me nuts. I don't like it. But like, yeah, like there was no bottom half of the outfit at all. It was just like really awesome boots. I mean, I'll give her like sure. literally up to thigh, up, almost up to her crotch boots. But like, you kind of needed more to that outfit. I love, oh my God, Carson's description of the outfit was so spot on when he was just like, it looks like, like Winona Judge is like, open the oven oh. too fast and was just like charred from the outside it totally was that was such a good description i i mean i don't know i i was just realizing we didn't really even talk much about um the guest judge nicole richie <laughs> nicole richie uh, there's who, not much to say she didn't really contribute a great deal in other the than judging. her line that about one how line. she would wear kim chi's outfit oh, to yeah. drop off her kids at school other yes. than that or when they're like are you a good witch or a badge wick or bad witch or a sandwich <laughs> 
I know. I thought that was cute. It's cute. I like Nicole Richie a lot. I wonder who gave her the line, or if that was her own line. We'll find. Yeah, I'm guessing someone really for her. No, I actually. But think But it's Nicole possible Richie's, that she could have come up with it on her she's own. She's actually or really heard f- it before. No, she's just super funny, actually. Um, but she was cute. She was nice. I didn't think brought a great deal to the proceedings. Yeah, but I also feel like nice at least she her. didn't interject stupid comments like that, I wouldn't stop on this page. I she, wouldn't stop yes, on this page. Yes, that's true. It's but, very true. Um, I but don't that, know. I feel like it was so. It's hard to be on the very first episode back because I feel like Carson and Ross and Miss Michelle all have their own opinions. And, and their they, their chemistry is like more. I personally don't understand why they have guest judges. Honestly, they, unless they wanted they, to do it so for a much mini challenge this season, because last season was very disjointed. Well, yeah, you and I were seen, worried about Rue and Michelle. Like uh, like all <clears> these <throat> new judges, I think that they really there was a lot of growing pains in last season, and I feel like they kind of got through them and by this season because they seem they seem much more comfortable working together on but this. But sometimes panel than I they do last often year. feel like I don't understand the point of some guest judges. Like I wouldn't mind them in the mini challenge. But sometimes judging the runway, I think that the four judges do fine by themselves. Yeah. And like you said, their chemistry is really Unless strong. Unless they have, like, you know, like someone who's very, like, you know, having John Waters. There. Or Margaret Cho. Or Margaret. Oh, she, she's, I wish she would come back again. But I know that uh, Debbie Harry is going to be a judge in an episode this season. That should be interesting. So I'm hoping. It looks like they're going to follow the same pattern as last season with uh, having a musical episode second. Oh. Um, it looks like there's going to be some musical, like, production challenge. But speaking of music, I thought that the choice of song for the lip sync was, I love the song. It's a fun song. I think it's a really good choice. I think it's nice, like, okay, they still got some money because they got a high profile song. <laughs> you know, there's that. And Gaga's really hot right now. So good job. Right. Exactly. And Layla being in the bottom felt kind of, because when you think about how they measured people when they were, because Robbie was close to being in the bottom too also, but when they really added it up, they're like, okay, well, Layla's photo was not good. Layla's runway was not good. Robbie's runway was not good, but Robbie's photo was amazing. When you really think of it, it's like, well, you got one out of two. Someone got zero out of two. One out of two beats zero out of two. I think it was a fair decision. Even if even so if the runway was epically bad, I do think that she was so much better in the photo that I think that it was fair that Robbie got another and chance. And I also don't think that it's there was a question about Nisha. Being, in the, the being in the bottom two. And I loved what Ross had to say, where it's like, you know, I feel like Layla is an artist, and I think that that deserves at least one se- a second chance. I, and they have no qualms I that. am like, I was even more glad that um, she was in the bottom two, because then we got to see that lip sync. I mean, granted, it was very Nisha's was not that great. It was like, Nisha was not really good. I think Kim, she song. called it. She's like, she looks like a soccer mom. I'm like, come on, kids. Get the goal. You can, you do, can it. do it. I was like, oh my God. I was like, nailed it. I love you, kimchi. That was shady. I, I really want to eat me some kimchi in more ways than one. Oh, Lord. <laughs> like kimchi. Very good. <laughs> kimchi but, um, is very good. It is delicious. Let's go to Goji Bowling. Okay. <laughs> Great place in Oakland. Gotta go. And this karaoke <laughs> bar next door. Nice. Anyways, um, but yes, Layla like slayed that lip sync. I was like, it was you couldn't so. Stop looking at her. You couldn't. It was like she was completely giving you a full performance. It wasn't just like sexy writhing part. It was like from beginning no. as soon as it started, she was in character and she stuck with that character throughout. It was like the sort of blase, bitchy, like been there. Yeah, I fucked two guys and I'm gonna fuck another one in an hour. <laughs> like kind of attitude almost. Like I, she really got like the spirit of the song too. I was like, I, like I'm applauding. It's for you. All for you, Layla. No. <laughs> uh, I mean, I thought that she did a really great job. I, I don't have any loved qualms. It. It was I felt so really good. bad for Nisha because she was trying to hold it together. I went back and watched it again, and it was just no chance for Nisha to compete with her. No, I felt bad for Nisha because there was no way she could compete with that. She didn't. It's not that she didn't want it bad enough. She's just too pageanty. That was the moment almost where it did feel slow. <laughs> that was a moment where. Um, if it was like, okay, this does feel a little planned because what better choice for Layla at this moment than that song where the album cover is like white makeup with like smeared colors. And I was like, okay, this is like destined. Either it's, they make it feel like it's destined for Layla to move on. Like you knew as soon as it started, you're like, oh, Layla, <laughs> <laughs> you got this girl. I, I don't know what you're going to do, but I have a feeling that you're going to move on. Because I did get a really strong sense, though, that she was not going to be the... She was not going to allow herself to be the first one sent home. That's just not going to go down for her. I thought... I really enjoyed it. I was like, okay, 
I want to see more. Let's see now that, like, you maybe, like, you shook off the nerves and now you had, like, basically you just got thrown into the deep end of the pool and you swam. Because that and picture was, it was so bad. Was Every time so they showed bad. it, it was like, She's, Ugh. like, shrinking into a ball. But even the way that she sat down, I think the, the Sitting on her foot. But the poking. photographer called it. He's like, you're like a dog trying to get comfortable on a couch. Right? Oh, my God. It's but so that's true. that's totally true. And that looks like totally the way that my dog would sit down. And then I'd take a picture of him and he'd look guilty. I, it, it looked, it was not a great look. And she is pretty in and out of drag. And I don't understand fucking matching contacts to make me crazy. <laughs> and I think she needs a little bit of some style help. But other than that, I think that the talent's really there. And clearly she wants it. I just always get really nervous when people talk about how bad they want something. Like, I think it was Chi-Chi said something. And I thought that Chi-Chi was definitely in trouble because that dress was okay and that disco ball was a little much. Yeah. Um, especially since it didn't serve a practical purpose at all. It was yeah. more just a literal ornament. And I feel like should she have pulled that shit four challenges into the show that it might not have gone over as well. But I'm glad that if she was going to do that, she does it now. And hopefully, I just wish that some of the queens that were safe got a little bit of critiquing, even though I know that we don't have time yeah. for it. I think that some of them need to hear it. Well, I mean, there was a lot of talk about Chi-Chi in the workroom, too, because they were just like, oh, well, what's your foundation? It's like, oh, whatever's cheapest. I thought that was you funny. Know, like, you mean, Girl, like, you've, you've been, been doing, doing this for five years and, and you, you don't not have brand, a brand? <laughs> you're not brand loyal. That was you're my... You're not brand loyal. <laughs> I thought that was the best thing oh, I've ever heard. I feel like one thing we should go over is, like, some of my favorite quips from the show I, okay. I made a little list okay yes give me an amazing like anime <laughs> i no i get it, it worked better when you saw kimchi when you said it but uh looking good feeling gorgeous oh uh, the line about alaska <laughs> when they were <laughs> this is a description of layla in the photo shoot matthew artisan she looks like the hamburg that's scaring around <laughs> behind everyone <laughs> <laughs> that was the photographer, That right? was the photographer. He was so shady. It was I love him. I love him. Or <laughs> when Bruce like, you, you seem stronger than yesterday. <laughs> I liked all of the Britney Hit me, puns. baby, one more time. Oh, that's a toxic combination. <laughs> oh, my God. All, all of the Britney puns were pretty apt. Oh, or the challenges from the anals of RuPaul's Drag Race. Did I say that right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think you did, actually. Nothing to change there. This is our, our this was a Thorgy's dress. Was the the red velvet like the cake, the cake challenge? And her hair was Sykes supposed to be the uh, cream cheese frosting, which I thought was. And really she had smart. The, like the fake candle and the actual piece of cake, so she had something to snack on if she got hungry. I know that bitch but, ain't fainting on the runway. Or like, what was it? Was this? A, I think this was actually a Nicole Richie line. This is feeling a little menstrual. <laughs> <laughs> All red, or RuPaul at the end of it. I feel like I just saw my laugh flash before my eyes. I'm like, well, yes, that was all eight. That was all the seasons of your show. That's why. Don't go towards the light, Rue. <laughs> oh, um, I did a lot of antacid in the 60s, and I think Acid Betty really represents that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or the fact that they were all they were all pissed off about Nasha saying that she never made a dress. It's the first time she made a dress. Right. It's like, this is not the place you make your first... This is not the place where you make your first dress. You make your first dress when you learn that you're going to come on the show. But I couldn't agree. <laughs> More. That's Why, so what true. Would, haven't you seen this show? You're gonna have to make something. At or some point. when Carson's like, or you make it when your mom's at work and you're in the sixth <laughs> grade. <laughs> that was really cute. Yeah, did that walk? Nisha's dancing like a soccer mom. Get the ball in the goal, kid. You can do it. Good job, <laughs> goal. Oh, I think it was a good punny episode. Yes. I think well, there's even more to come. Yes, and we bid a, a fond farewell to Nisha. We knew ye not very much. At all. Not very much at all. But I did. I think what best encapsulates her entire persona was that the only thing that anybody could compliment her on is being beautiful. And I think to her, that was more than enough of a validation because she just kept saying thankful. She kept saying thank you. And she looked very tearful. And Rue even kind of seemed a little like, it was like, oh, you know, and it's so sad to see you go so soon. It was like, you seem awfully like personable and like, a little more touch than you felt last season. By people going, you know what I meant? Like, it was just like, there was an effort there. You know, you know, it was an actress. Right. But uh, I feel like there was a little bit more of an effort to show some level of a human connection in that moment with her for whatever reason, which was welcome. I think she 
feels for all of the queens on a certain level that don't Cause it felt make so it all like, the way through. Especially, like, it, I don't think being eliminated the first episode can feel great. Yeah, but she's not usually that, like... Empathetic? There's not a, yeah, there's not a pang of emotion so much in it. as Not as much as there was, I felt, with that elimination. Just a little bit... It was an emotional episode, too, though. It was, it was a landmark or milestone, excuse That's me. That's true. So maybe she was already it kind was of all, emotional you know, like to it, begin with. You know, I felt like it was a good way to celebrate a hundred, a hundred hours of Drag Race beauty. Because <laughs> I was, I was very happy. I, I'd rate that episode pretty, pretty high. I think, I think, I it makes it's wet my appetite very well for the season to come. And yeah, I was pretty upset that there. I didn't see a preview or like a season. Oh, like, trailer. oh yeah, they didn't do a season trailer. I mean, not, not like, you know, like, coming this this mm-hmm. season mm-hmm. on Drag Race. It was just a clip of the next one, which showed shots of them doing a musical, musical production thing, which means more Lucian Piani. <laughs> Yay, your yes. boyfriend's back! Yay! He's such a tease on Instagram, too. My God, lately. Mm. And it's never with another person. Oh, okay, well. Not, not lately, anyways. Mm-hmm. She moved to L.A. I would love me some Lucian Piani. We all know. Mm. But we'll probably see him next week, I hope. Probably. I mean, he is... Fingers crossed. He's the musical director for all intents and purposes on the show. But you know, like, my brain just kind of shuts off whenever he's on camera. You can lead a horde of culture, but you can't make her think. Wow. (laughs) And with that... (laughs) Yes, I guess that's a good place to sign off. I think it's a perfect spot. (laughs) Um, You can, of course, catch the Shady Lady edition of Gambitchery on our iTunes profile. You can download it and you can subscribe to it for free, and it'll pop up every single time we have a new one. It's going to be like almost every week now um, for the next at least 12 weeks. Oh, it's going to be a glorious 12 weeks. At least 12, you know. They may drag it out a little bit longer. Um, but, you know, we can find us on iTunes for free. You can also, of course, find us at the Gambit Digital YouTube page um, where we will have all of our other editions, including our Ice Cream, You Scream podcast. Um, and when Top Model comes back, big news there. Oh, um, that'll be back too. Um, lots to come. And of course you can always find our work on the Gambit magazine website. Um, uh, make sure, I don't know. Why don't you tweet us what you thought of the drag race Queens this season and this introduction? Uh, you can of course, uh, find me at Samir Raculous. And what's your fabulous handle, dear? You can find me at Margs. She wrote. Yes, you can. She's very popular on Twitter. <laughs> Very funny, too. Aw, thanks, girl. Yeah. Aw, but yes, you can find us in many places. And, of course, also, even on Instagram. Tag us on Instagram. Yeah. Oh, if you haven't already seen, for all you Instagrammers out there, Fifi O'Hare is doing a 365 Days of Drag. Oh, yes. And she wants, it's fantastic. It really does get better every single day. Fifi's creativity is really limitless. It's She's doing a great job. So much she, better than when she was on the show, actually. It's kind of insane. Like, night and day. Like, I never thought to follow her. And then I saw an article that was like, Fifi O'Hara is doing 90s cartoons. I was like, what? And I looked at all the pictures like, follow. This is done. But she was recently in a jacket that she hand-painted. And if you look at that jacket, it is crazy detailed. It probably took her months to finish it. Crazy. Lots of fun. It's like we're at an Indian party. We say we're saying goodbye, and then we start talking again. Or like any party. It always takes me like minimum <laughs> half an hour to leave wherever the hell I'm let's at. Put my, let's put my coat back on. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's back just, somebody give me another beer. I'm just going to be here for another hour or so. <laughs> but yeah, we gave you we gave you the rundown on where you can we find us. We gave you life. <laughs> I hope so. This show gave me oh. life again. Uh, seriously, it felt like it was gone forever, and now I'm so happy. New batch of queens, yay! Yay! Well, I guess we'll see you all next week. Until then, I guess it's... May bye. the shade be oh. with you. Yes. Also, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> but yes, may the shade, shade be, be with, with you. you. Bye. Bye. bye.